today we are going to have a look at the uh, the virtual pin that I've got here, how it works and how you can use some of the things that I've done in your own build and that's really what this video is all about. Or here maybe because you are interested in building your own pin, well let's take a look at all the aspects of it because there is, um, there is quite a lot to consider when you're building a virtual pin. Now the first thing is, guys, you've probably seen, if you go and look for one that's already pre-built, a virtual pinball machine, uh, you're looking at a lot of money, right? In Australia here, well over 5000 to, you know, six, dollars $7,000. It's like the price of a, of a brand new, like, real pinball machine. Of course, you're getting all the other pinball machines in there in terms of virtual uh, machines. Um, mind you, they shouldn't really be including them in those machines because uh, they are free tables available on the net other than things like the Pinball Arcade and, and um, Pinball FX2 and so forth, which you can also play on here. Um, but yeah, that's expensive um, when you look at it firsthand. But the thing is, guys, that there is actually quite a lot of hardware that goes into these machines. Even if you make your own machine like I have done here, you'll find that um, it soon adds up. Uh, especially if you're going to like build your own cabinet as well. I don't think that's necessarily a, a great idea. Um, there's a lot of a lot of wooden hardware in these machines. Um, having said that, if you find yourself a donor pinball machine, of course, make sure it's one that can't be uh, recovered or repaired and it's been stripped already. Don't want to uh, send too many uh, pinball machines off to the graveyard in terms of um, swapping out all their good parts for a, uh, a virtual pinball. But anyway, enough of that. Um, so yeah just be wary that if you take on this project it is a big project it's not like a main box um, main was a little bit easier to sort of set up and and whatnot but there's a lot of similarities with that so don't let that put you off um, it's just a matter of going through it methodically and picking up the pieces you need so first of all guys what do you have to do you have to get yourself a machine two types of machines you've got the normal um, size pimple machines and you've got the wide bodies and um, you know, have a think carefully about that. I, I think it's a personal preference thing, um, mind you. I chose a, a, a normal uh, width uh, pinball machine. I just like that sort of size when I'm standing up um, on it to play the, the games. Um, you know, most of the games that are emulated are, of course, the normal size anyway. Um, you will play some widescreen pinball uh, games that are virtualized, and of course, on a narrower screen, it doesn't look quite as good. But vice versa you don't really want to play the normal ones on a widescreen so i think it's really a personal preference things guys so just uh, choose your cab first um, but you can do either a lot of people do choose the widescreen one for their own personal preference other than that really it's all about just getting an empty uh, empty cab to start with and then really planning out um, how you're going to fit it out in terms of screens so you'll see behind me um, that i've got two real uh, well two PC screens here and I've actually got a real DMD so yeah you can choose to have the two screens uh, and a real um, DMD um, or you can choose to have three screens so that you can have the uh, the DMD display on a, a third monitor now a lot of the cards these days a lot of the video cards support um, having three outputs off the one card so you can certainly do that um, when I first built this, a lot of the cards I had only had two outputs, so I had to put two video cards in to uh, support three screens and, and have the DMD on the on the third screen. So up to you how you want to con configure that. Um, I highly recommend getting a real DMD. There's nothing like it. You won't you won't see it on the video camera, but the brightness of that thing is is super bright. Um, it's a little bit it's a little bit like trying to capture a vector monitor you just can't get the brightness um, on, on a video screen until you see it real life it's the same thing with these it really does provide an added experience this one's an orange one and it's running some hardware called um, pin dmd2 there is a pin dmd3 that's now out and that actually has a full rgb color uh, dmd display and certainly if i hadn't have got this one i would have gone for the later one even though a lot of the pinball machines actually didn't have uh, color displays i've seen a few out in the wild that have had the color mods done which is an official uh, official mod um, <clears throat> that's on real machines but um yeah the you know most of them were, were if they had dmds they were in orange anyway this particular dmd 
it was called a Vichet, I think it was called, a Vichet, I can't remember the, if it was a 1000 or Vichet 2000 or 3000, I can't remember now. But that was a separate part that I bought, um, as well as the pin DMD2 controller to drive it, which then just runs through to the PC via USB. Um, so we'll look at that a little bit more when we actually get under the covers of the, uh, of the machine. But if you don't choose that, yeah, just you can use three displays. So what else we got in terms of hardware? Well, the other things we have here is um, a few things in terms of cabinet considerations and screen sizes to just be aware of, guys. So in here, currently, I have actually a 30, uh, I think it's actually a 30, was it a 39 inch at the time? I think, or maybe it was a 37 point, oh no, 38.5, somewhere around there anyway. A long time ago since I got this particular screen. It's got quite th thick bezels on the side. Um, these bezels today would be really the bezels you would see if you picked up the machine, or the, sorry, the screen. Um, in terms of that would be the outside bezel. That is not the outside bezel of this particular TV when I got it. This was a, uh, a TV which I've decased. And this is the raw panel uh, just sitting in there. And you'll see that it actually fits in here just perfectly. And that was a harrowing experience, buying a brand new TV and ripping off the case to see if it would fit. <laughs> so I had an inkling that it would. And by golly, it's a millimeter or so off either side. So um, I, I, I believe you can, you can get like a 40 inch, um, which will fit in there perfectly these days with a very very thin edge and of course you can get much much better quality um, displays than the one that I have in here although well, this one's perfectly fine to be honest I'm just currently running 1080p it's going to be um, you can run 4k um, and there are some tables that have been specifically uh, worked on to be 4k uh, in terms of quality so that's pretty awesome so I'm looking at doing that down the track but for, for now especially if you're running it with a PC with um, you know, reasonable hardware, uh, not top-end stuff, then you probably would be wanting to run at 1080p anyway. And you also see the way that I've got this hooked in here. Um, again, a lot of people do this in different ways. Uh, some people like to have it like flat, right from the top. Um, I don't particularly like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's 2D, it's not 3D as we know. It's a emulated 3D. Uh, so what I've done is I've just dropped it into the cabinet down and sort of just helps it, I think, in terms of giving it a 3D look. And the side panels here of the machine sort of drop away like a real machine uh, would. So I quite like that, but you might want to do it differently. One of the things in relation to that is around the front, you've got your main launch ball controller and your plunger. And the way that I've got it situated here is I've got the plunger set down lower so that the actual plunger mechanism goes underneath the display, even though the display comes down on an angle. Otherwise, if the display was on an angle and the plunger was up the top, you would see the plunger over the top of the screen up here, the back of it. So uh, that would be no good. <clears throat> so that's why it works on my particular configuration. But if you're building your own, you need to think about those things well in advance. Otherwise, you might end up putting your screen in the wrong place and your plunger not being in the right place for the screen. Now, of course, in a widescreen cabinet, you would be able to get a much bigger TV in there for your play field. So that's another thing to consider. But again, I don't know if it, you know going too big, it starts looking a bit strange again for those normal tables, but it's up to you. In terms of the aspect ratio, it's not exactly the length of a normal pinball table, which really an ultra wide screen would be absolutely perfect for this. And in fact, if you made a if you made a mini sort of pinball machine, because you can't really get the ultra wides in this this exact size, I've been looking. <laughs> Um, but if you made a smaller one, you can make a, a miniature pinball machine with, a, with an ultra wide, which would have really the, the right aspect ratio. The only problem with that is that the software currently doesn't support, um, well, the, the tables haven't been designed with ultra wide in mind, which is a real shame. That would have been awesome, but at the moment it says 16 by 9, so you'll see at the back here, it doesn't look like it from here because we're front on to the, to the machine, but the head unit I've actually moved forward um, so that it comes, you know, close to the back of the screen. So it's a bit of an optical illusion. It sort of looks like a normal size machine, uh, but in fact it is actually uh, smaller. And all I did there is on this particular um, pinball machine, it's had four bolts in the in the back for the head, and I just moved it forward and just stuck it on the, the, the two front bolts. 
um, and that brings it forward. Now I have seen other people do it in a different way where they'll keep the physical apron of the original pinball machine at the front and then they'll move the screen in front of it um, and then the screen and then the you know the, the back box is in its normal place and to me it just looks a bit odd because you've sort of got like a physical apron and then when you see your virtual machine you've also got a virtual apron so you've got double double aprons <coughs> and your flippers are, are way up you know further up the, the play field here I like to see them where they should be which is right down here and nice and close so it's another thing that you need to just consider if you you know where you position your screen and if you want it back or forward I personally bef uh, like it closer to me so that's all the the main things about the main display <coughs> if we look at the back box the display in the back has a couple of things there first of all you'll see that this graphics isn't all the way down to the bar and that's because it was previously but <coughs> when I had to fix up the PC I did have to change out the graphics card just so I need to fix that up but anyway you can see like normally that that whole back glass here would be all the way down to the bottom and it looks pretty cool I mean it's still not <coughs> properly square like a like a lot of the pimple back glasses are but it's a nice effect the other thing is you'll see that it's exactly like the fitting of the um, of the back back box itself edge to edge and to do that I actually had to cut a hole on the side of the uh, the back box all the way through and slit and slid the TV through so that the actual edges of the TV are actually within the wood and then actually filled the outside in, sanded it off, and then I've uh, re-decaled the whole cabinet with a theatre of magic theme anyway, so that covers it up completely. But it does mean that that TV's not coming out of there. <laughs> but the other nice thing is, is that, yeah, it's edge-to-edge -edge display from a back box perspective. And it's just something to think about, guys, because um, I think if you've got <coughs> big bezels around the, the back box, it just, again, loses some of its... Um, it's feel you know I mean I know it's a virtual box everyone knows it's a virtual machine but I think it's just nice if you just pay attention to some of those details and maximize the screen area if you can in terms of the screens themselves like that back one was a real that was an old like Sony sort of TV this one here is a, a, a TV again so we're not talking about computer monitors here guys and in terms of you know there may, may be people that will detect you know a bit of input lag and and um, differences in, in terms of the colors and refresh rates and so forth from a computer monitor but for me it's it's fine I mean yeah the refresh rate probably could be could be higher um, which, which would be a nice thing when you've got a really fast moving ball but other than that it doesn't really bother me some other nice things about a real pimple machine like if you instead of building it yourself again with all the hardware one of the key things is the lockdown bar now you could buy a lockdown bar and add it to your own, uh, you know, home-built cabinet, but the lockdown bar is just just gives it a really, really nice feel when you got your hands on the side pressing the buttons. It's just, you know, it just feels right. Now at the moment, you'll also notice I've actually got the glass off it um, because I was fixing it all up and getting it all working. So the glass is in here, but normally there'll be the pimple glass here. And we'll we'll get it all dialed in uh, later when we fix it all back up and. Uh, you also see that there's some lighting around the side so there's a number of sort of force feedback and um, feedback type of uh, things added to this cabinet to give it a little bit more zing uh, rather than just running the emulation software itself there's some hardware in here as well that just adds to the experience so we'll be looking at that stuff as well this here is uh, some RGB Cree lighting and I have three of those down the left hand side and two on the right hand side and they will flash in place of the actual real flashes of the pinball machines driven by the ROMs uh, themselves so it provides a pretty authentic experience obviously it's not going to be in exactly the same position as the flashes would be uh, on the table that you play because the tables move and this, this is hardware so that's not clearly they don't sit around on the outside like this uh, normally I have them uh, screwed in to the side here uh, with little covers on top of them um, so that it just spreads disperses the light because they are really really bright but they are absolutely awesome and they provide an added experience um, to the whole game uh, play as well so we'll look at that when we get underneath the covers elsewhere on this cabinet um, i've got a topper up the the top there i think that 
remember where that came from. It's a topper of one pin ball, I'm not sure which. Uh, I've got some other bits and pieces in there, but there's some more Cree lighting up the top there, which actually hooks through to the Cree lighting that's here. So they're sort of, they're linked through to the same um, driver board and it mirrors the, uh, the lights just to give it a nice effect. So there's lighting happening off the top of the back, um, top of the back box and there's lighting happening around the sides to, to mimic the real lightning. And I'll tell you what guys, that really does provide a big difference to the gameplay because the normal lighting of an LCD monitor is, you know, it's just the same brightness as the, as the monitor. But when these things kick in, they are really, really bright. And all the flashing and stuff, you just really sort of get absorbed into it and think you, you know, you, you get a little bit closer to playing a real pinball. Never going to be the same, guys, but it gets pretty, pretty close. Okay, well, the other thing I need to talk about here is in terms of uh, buttons. And I've seen a lot of people on their pinball machines, their virtual ones, they create just huge amounts of buttons. I wanted to keep it really simple, keeping in theme with the original uh, pinball machine. So I went just for the original start button, the extra ball, but I did actually add another ball for a exit button. And in hindsight, I probably could have got away with doing a combination of the start and extra to exit out. Um, so you might want to think about that. The launch ball on the right hand side, because some of those tables that don't have a plunger, uh, require you just to press the launch so you do need both of those I mean you could have just the plunger I guess you have the launch underneath or a separate smaller button on the left for those games with launch again you can it's up to you really how you want to uh, lay that out but for me this works really well one of the things about the launch button like that I find that if I've got my hands on the side of the uh, the machine I can actually um, um, I'll be playing if I lose the ball I can just reach around with my pinky finger and, and just hold the button down and, and push it and that'll uh, release the plunger which is pretty cool. So yeah you need to just decide how you do that but do, do have a think about that guys because one of those sort of little gotchas about building one of these tables is where do these buttons go. Um, I had to sort of re-drill where some of my buttons went and fill them in. On the side I've got the normal um, flipper button and then we've also got a magna save. Now magna save, you know, some ta tables and in the, in the uh, some virtual tables uh, do support it. And normally, uh, I think on most pinball machines that have magna saves, they're normally sort of forward uh, to the flipper button. You know, they're in front. Now I didn't want to do that because again, um, where my screen is is slightly lower. So if I put another button through there, you'd be able to see the mechanism for the button poking through. It wouldn't look good aesthetically, so I decided to put it down uh, down further. And all I did is I actually stuck my hand on the side of the uh, the cabinet, put my hand comfortably where the flipper button is, and then just dropped my hand down. And then basically wherever my finger landed was where I put the uh, magnus A button. So have a think about that because again, it needs to be easy for uh, for people to to access and for yourself to, to access when you're playing games with MagnaSave. Okay guys, and poking down out the back there is um, two uh, flashing units too. So they give a bit of a strobe flashing effect. Another nice effect to go along with the Cree lighting. Other than that, in terms of the outside aesthetics, um, obviously I've, I've done it up with some Theatre of Magic artwork. That artwork isn't actually doesn't fit the style of machine. Um, it should really be in a 90s style uh, box which is which is different in size so the artwork is cut off slightly and these older machines used to have a much bigger side rail so I actually replace those side rails with the 90s style side rails so you get more uh, visibility of the art so this is a little bit of a, uh, a custom uh, version of a real pinball machine that's for sure but uh, you know I like it. so guys what I'll do is I'll just have a quick game right now so you can see it running as it is obviously again these Cree lightings are just hanging out the side here so we'll put these back in properly once we take it apart but let me just give you a bit of a look of how it plays and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the screen out and then we'll get in behind there and I'll show you all the parts underneath there and how it all hangs together so the other thing guys I did just in terms of ease of playing is that um, in terms of the credit button I just rigged that up to the coin rejection button so you press that get more coins in and you can see the way that the software is rigged up. It goes through a lead whiz, which I'll show you later. And you can see that the start button is uh, flashing, ready to go. Now, having, having some uh, problems with this plunger, 
which I need to get sorted out. That actually requires a whole new plunger. You can see now though that this uh, table is nice and smooth. I'll just turn it down a little bit. That's the other nice thing with a virtual table. Of course you can turn it up and down how you like it. Won't be able to get the uh, skill shot without getting that plunger sorted. <coughs> Okay, you'll hear the uh, the rumble pack there. So it's got a rumble pack and a gear motor as well as a knocker. And we'll look at those uh, later when we get into the, the machine. And also, you can see that it, I can wobble the ball here. So it's got full nudging. And guys, you, you really do have to have nudging working because that's what pinball's all about. So it's a big step from uh, just being uh, emulated and virtual to the real life feel when you've got some nudge happening and not so much with these 90s games I mean you still need nudge every so often but certainly for older style games nudging is essential <coughs> ball was nice and smooth uh, I've got a, a new graphics card in here guys and it's an overkill because it's actually my 1080 from my uh, main gaming rig uh, which I've replaced with a 1080 Ti so this is well and truly uh, more than what's required for this machine but makes everything silky smooth and I guess with pinball that's you know that's one of the things you really need to uh, have a smooth experience um, because if it's jerky you'll just you know it takes you out of the, the feeling that it's real but you can, you know, once you get into this with the, with the really good sound and with the rumbling and the gear motors and um, the Cree lighting, all of that, just and just feeling the table, you know, it feels like a real pinball table. You really do sort of just forget. You just forget your you're in, in a virtual table you just ride into playing pinball which is just, just so awesome considering you can swap tables and play uh, tons of others as well so yeah that was a rather average game but that was just to sort of show you uh, what it looks like and um, what we'll do now is we shall uh, open up the hood and of course I don't have the glass on here I mean normally I would uh, take off the lockdown bar, um, bar and take the glass out um, but we can just go straight in and pull the screen out. So what I'll do is I'll power it down first of course and then um, let's get the screen out and let's look inside. Okay guys, so normally to get this off I would be uh, coming in here and taking off the, uh, the lockdown bar. And I think I'll just tighten it up, there we go. And that'll be sliding out of the glass when, it, when it's when you normally have it all set up. Okay, now at the moment you'll see that um, these Cree lighting is actually sort of stuck around the side, just in that gap. It does sort of pin itself underneath the screen and what I want to do eventually is actually cut some channels for this wiring um, so that it doesn't you know, keep getting caught underneath the screen. The screen doesn't move out a lot but obviously every time I take it in and out it's a risk of fraying the wires. They're pretty sturdy though. So anyway, we'll get the screen out of here. Let's lift it up. <clears throat> around and uh, around the back here I'll just take off the power and on this side take out the HDMI so you can see around the back here is uh, basically a raw raw panel from a TV and you'll notice that the, this front side over here, I actually got the original control, remote control panel, which this, this part of the um, plastic, front plastic here was like a strip across the whole bottom of the original TV. And uh, so I cut that off and then sort of attached it to the front just so that I can still actually operate it through the door if I want to, to um, access the, uh, the settings. Now one other, one other important thing guys to um, to note about these TVs is that often um, they won't actually turn on 
automatically when they're first powered up. So I just got it, I just struck lucky that as soon as this one gets power, it comes on and as soon as it recognises the source, it's, it's, it's happening. Other ones you have to actually power them on manually, which could be a bit of a pain in a cabinet, obviously, especially if you have to do it through infrared um, using a remote. So maybe it's another thing you need to check before you buy a particular TV, see if it uh, automatically turns on. All right, guys, so let's take a peek inside. Now, this definitely isn't a professional job, is it? <laughs> Wires absolutely everywhere. Obviously, when uh, cables are nicely tidied up, everything looks a lot better. So this is pretty much a quick and dirty job of getting all this in here originally. I have intended to come back and clean it up at some stage. But look, that doesn't stop us going through today and looking what's in here. Just getting a bit of a feel and understanding for what you need to be connected up. It might look a little bit daunting initially for some of you, but really it's not. And we look through the basic things first. We have a PC, so pretty standard. Uh, as I said, I'm running a 1080 GTX card in there, but that's really, or GeForce, that's really uh, overkill. Uh, I had a 780 in here before, and that was the one that died. That was working pretty well, so that's an older style card. I tried a 950 from my main box when I was doing some testing. That did half the tables okay, some studded. So I think probably a 960 might be, or sort of a 10 if in the, in the current generation, 1060 might be sort of a, um, a, a good minimum. Uh, 1070 would eat up a lot of stuff and then 1080 of course if you wanted to get up to sort of 4k type of stuff so yeah other than that um the, the other thing i put in here was an ssd drive this is poking in and down under here and uh geez what a massive difference that has made now this thing fires up in no time short so I definitely recommend an ssd and of course the other thing in terms of a hard disk drive an ssd is the right way to go was because you don't want mechanical drives in here, you're nudging the thing, right? You don't want to be nudging the PC with hard drives in here. Um, I mean, the alternative thing, and I think I had this at one stage set up like this, I actually had this PC outside of the box, out of the pimple machine, and then just, you know, bringing the wires up inside. But I think once I started getting all the other force feedback and lots of different USB connections, I decided to bring it all back into the, into the case itself. I've got a little um, unit on here that just gives me the temperature so when I open up the front door I can see the temperature of the cab. It stays really, really pretty uh, cool in here. One thing I added underneath this PC um, on the bottom part of the cabinet I've actually got two uh, massive one, I think 120 centimetre fans um, drawing air up into the cab and effectively the airflow goes underneath the cab here up through the back box and then around the back of the back box um, there's holes around the top and the air goes out the back there as the, the heat rises so so yeah so that's uh that's the standard pc setup now you will notice that up the top here i've got an additional power supply uh, that is a normal atx pay, power supply as well but that's the one that's actually driving the pc so what's this one doing well this one is driving a extra um booster board here so this particular board, and, it's, and again it looks sort of relatively complicated, but it's, it's not really. This is uh, from Zeb's board, boards. Now I highly recommend Zeb's boards. Um, this worked flawlessly as well as the shaker motor and the, um, and the gear motor. Both of those uh, worked absolutely 100%. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy and he's got a whole lot of other new stuff now. So this was sort of the, I think the older equipment. Um, but what's going on here? Well, basically, a couple of things. A little bit hard to show just because of the amount of wires that are going in here. And also, I'm trying to remember myself um, in relation to how this is all set up. But you can see through the back here, just I think, just around the back here, this is where all the RGBs, really hard to see there, guys, sorry. But this is where all the RGB connections for the, uh, the Cree lighting is going, it goes into that. And this just provides the necessary um, boosted power to drive those things because th those lights are so bright. Now normally what you could do is you could drive those lights off your typical lead whiz board which is what I've got here. So you'd have those connected off the side here and 
that's okay when you're sort of driving the little small LEDs, but when you're driving those really high-powered Cree lighting flashing effects, this board it doesn't really cope that well. So again, Zeb's boards had a, uh, a way of interfacing from uh, his booster board to the lead was. So the way that this is hooked up is the lead was goes to the PC. So in the software, I've got it set up so that it's um, connecting through to a lead was to drive the lighting. So it comes through in here, and as I said, you could have LEDs driving off the, off the back of that uh, if you just wanted to have that by itself, or you hook it up to here and then have all your RGB lighting being driven off here instead. And as far as the software is concerned, it's just talking to the lead was and uh, that's driving this board. And the other thing that it's uh, driving on here is, well, we can do a number of things. First thing is it's got, it drives a knocker. So main knocker, if you win a game, uh, you can see it just at the back there. So I've just screwed it to the side. So that gives that big thump knock when you get a, a uh, you know extra ball for some games. And, uh, and also replays and that sort of thing. So that's driven off there as a piece of additional hardware. And then down the, down the side here we have the, um, the gear motor, which is this guy here. And then we've got a, a rumble pack there. So the gear motor sort of makes that sort of whiny noise that a lot of um, games have when they're sort of moving sort of um, <coughs> you know, something metal across the play field. It sort of gives that whirring noise, sort of like a, I always think of it like a window wiper, but it's more of a, a gear noise, which is why it's called a gear motor. Uh, and the other one's the rumble, which gives you the shake, and so that shakes the cabinet. So um, really cool, and Jurassic Park, and plenty of other games that Circus Voltaire, a lot of those use the, uh, the rumble pack. And so that will just shake the whole machine, and you feel it as you're playing it. So those two units there are effectively hooked back up to the booster board and if I look closely here and again guys I'm re-looking at this for the first time after a long time yeah we've got that on there I can't read it probably read it better on the camera actually but um, I can see one of them says strobe there so that's for the strobe lights the other's got to be for the gear motor and the uh, the shaker motor as well and um, we also have in the middle here a whole load of, a row of contactors so what you can do is you can hook up uh, contactors here or solenoids to here and they will fire off when the bumpers fire off on the virtual pinball machines and so again that would give it another nice uh, nice effect if you real sort of hear the real solenoids hitting the side of the cabinets you literally would just set them up along you know around the back here and so uh, they'd fire off and hit the side of the cabinet every time a bumper is, is hit on the virtual machine. So I might do that at one stage. I haven't got that rigged up as yet. But uh, but again, this boards these boards have changed, guys. But the main thing is is that if you go to Zeb's boards and just go through and, and look through his stuff, and he's again extremely knowledgeable, and he's on some of the forums there. He'll certainly provide assistance where you, where you need uh, where you need it. But in terms of hardware in here. It's really as complex as it gets. Um, you know, the main booster board driving all the Cree lighting and the two pieces of hardware being the shaker motor and the gear motor, as well as the knocker, and it could drive some contactors as well. And uh, we've got the lead was, which is the main one connecting through to it, which is driving all the lighting. And then outside of that, we have a plunger over here. And you can see, you know, because the plunger bar comes all the way in here, and that's why, remember I was saying about the, um, the screen sits on the top here. And uh, you see it only just clears that as it sits there. And then the screen also rests close to the flipper button where the leaf switch is. And the screen stops here and comes up to the sort of the front of the, um, uh, the lockdown bar. So other than that, in terms of all the uh, standard buttons. Oh, by the way, sorry, the... Uh, this plunger unit comes through to, there's one more board down here, underneath the wiring, a little board here. So that, that board, hard to see, but it's just a little PCB anyway. And that's an, just another USB board that's connected up, which drives the plunger. And I can't remember if that one is actually driving also the switches. I know a number of the plunger boards allow you to plug the plunger in, and also they support a standard lot of um, push buttons as well 
but you can use any sort of push button thing and again if you've set up a main machine uh, you'll be familiar with things like iPacks and so forth and any of those sorts of types of devices you can use to um, hook up your buttons so you can see again coming back to that power supply that whole power supply is feeding that booster board here as well as the top board here um, and it just provides an additional supply. I didn't want to load that off the uh, the back of the PC one. It's better to have a dedicated one. And the uh, the connector there anyway is is the same as one going straight to a motherboard. So having a separate power supply is a good idea. Okay, the only other thing here, uh, there's some original pimple wiring from what was here previously. Uh, but as I said, I've got one of these hooked up to uh, the front um, reject button. So that's that one. And it goes back off and uh, connects up to a register a credit button and other than that guys there really isn't much more in here we've got a uh, subwoofer at the back and uh, coming up into the um, the Vichy uh, real DMD uh, there's a little control board which is the, the pin DMD not we're not going to be able to see that in there I don't think um, but that is in there behind there and that runs off uh, 5 volts I think so I've got a 5 volt adapter driving that um, display the other thing you'll notice I haven't really finished these speakers I want to get some proper speakers in here that, that fit this um, just got some tucked in behind there that are linked through to the sub and definitely recommend having a, a sub for these, uh, for these guns for sure and then this little guy here, I didn't really talk about that before, but that's to stop the reflection of the DMD onto the glass. So normally when you have a glass here, you can get a real harsh reflection from the DMD onto the playfield. Uh, so that just stops it. And when you're sort of at a playing distance, at a playing height, it sort of disappears because you're sort of looking down at the table like that. So you really don't see it. Um, there are other ways of doing that. Some people put this like privacy, uh, like glass or mesh that you can put on there. Not really a mesh, it's like a film. And uh, that just allows light to come out a certain way, like straight out and up and not down. And I've seen people use that as well, which is pretty effective. At the back here, you can see those flashing units too. Actually bent back a little bit. I can bring them forward and they'll uh, provide a little bit more output in terms of uh, being able to visually see them and guys that's really it so as i said it's not particularly hard in terms of hardware it really is just a pc got extra power supplies the boosted boards from zebs you know the, the lead whiz which you would use in a main box anyway typical buttons that you just wire up as you would if you're doing a main box and then you've really just got a couple of extra devices uh, like the gear motor the rumble pack and uh, the knocker at the back and then if you choose to put um, more solenoids or contactors in install those up there as well and really off you go so let's get this all buttoned back up and uh, with the glass on and all and the uh, the lighting back where it should be <laughs> needs to be screwed back up on here and uh, then we'll fire up the machine and we'll have a look at the software side of things Right, so you can see that I've got the uh, Cree lights back in here, and these were just little pinball uh, light covers that I got from, I think, Marco uh, a long time ago. Uh, what I will do, though, is that they are still really bright. There's, there's three there, and you can see there's two there, um, and they are still really bright. So what I normally do is I just stick a little bit of black tape. It's classy, I know, but <laughs> I put a bit of black tape just over the side here. Uh, and then it just ensures the light flicks out that way and not really straight back into your eye because they are really super bright. They're so effective. And just in terms of the layout, it just so happens, I mean, a lot of games tend to have like flashy units about here, like three of them. Or if there is a, you know, if they've only got one, then it's normally here or, or up the back there or one up the, down the bottom. And because this side's the plunger lane, um, normally there might be one on the inside here and one up the top. And I found that it's generally pretty close um, in that sort of layout. So if you want to do something similar, I highly recommend that. And uh, you'll find that with the software, the software will light up 
generally in the same colour as whatever the one is on the table and it just spills out extra light over the top of it and again just provides a really really nice effect. Now there's some other ways of doing this, I know some people actually just have a bar at the back sort of covering that whole area and they have their uh, six or five or six lights across the back. Um, again, I I don't particularly like that because I you know as the flashes are going off like mid table, they're all flashing at the end, whereas this spills light across the table. I just think it's a better effect personally. Now um, there's a guy called Randar who uh, that's his tag name. He's he's got a really awesome uh, virtual pinball setup, and he's got LED like an LED strip that goes all the way up around the back. And then a whole panel of LEDs at the back and he's got it worked out so that um, you know when you launch a ball it, goes, it flies up through with lights all the way up although that wouldn't have been an effect on the original table but it looks pretty cool but I think the, the key thing I'm not sure if he's actually done this or not but given that it's a full strip ideally you should be able to like light up exactly where the actual um, you know the flashy unit is on the real table you'd be able to light up next to it in the right color but I'm not sure I don't think I mean because it's LED type technology that is used there I don't think it's as nearly as bright as these crazy I could be wrong but these things are really really bright and provide just a whole another level of experience I think <laughs> all right guys so I'm just going to get a little bit of tape over the side of these and uh, then we'll slide the glass back up and then we should be uh, ready to turn it back on. Okay, I've got the uh, classy black tape on here. <laughs> it's not a great solution. I really need to uh, probably paint them at some point. Just for you guys though, if you are gonna create a cap and if you're gonna do something similar like this, then what I recommend and something that I would certainly have done if I thought about it, was I would have routed holes into the cab and for the wiring to come up and actually had, because the, the Cree lighting is actually really quite flat, we you know, without this, without this cover. And you could actually inset it into the wood and then maybe put a, cl a, cl a um, flat piece of um, perspex just covering it that would have been really tidy and you wouldn't see them uh, on the sides at all and then you'd be able to lift up your uh, screen whenever you want to because at the moment i have to undo all that whenever i want to get underneath it. okay all right let's get the glass in and let's fire it up okay guys to fire it up we go underneath here and we have the original well, we have a new button where the uh, uh, original switch would have been for the machine and, uh, and also you can see under there there's the two fans i was talking about earlier and uh, this one here is just linked straight up to the pc uh, on off button effectively i just rewired it straight to that switch so that turns on the piece straight into pinball x and bang here we go so Pinball X is the front end that I am using and all the tables are on here accessible by just flicking through and so you'll find on here there's actually um, there's both real pinball machines and there's also machines from uh, Pinball FX so that's also hooked up through the same front end and actually here you can get a bit of a view of the, um, see I was talking about that reflection, so if you're down low like this, that's what you would normally get without that black thing in place. But your normal playing position is here. So um, you don't see it, so that's why that's there. So really do think about that guys, because that can actually be pretty distracting um, if you had that on the screen at all times. Alright guys, so... Um, We'll look at the software. What I'll do though is look, let's just go into a game just so I can show you what these lights look like now that they are all positioned. Okay, let's hop into Scared Stiff. And uh, got a nice little screen here as it loads. Looks like it's the inside of a pinball machine. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I have seen uh, other people put on the back glass as well, sort of showing around the back as if it was empty. Okay, so now you can see, so we're in scared stiff at the moment. There's a lot of red lights on this one. I mean, there's not a lot of other colours. Um, but even at the start here, you can see how they they glow and they just add that extra bit of something to the, uh, to the table. And you can see they're replicated up the top, as I was saying before. 
so you get that glow and I've also got that other little um, sort of dome thing from eBay which actually used to have a um, its own coloured light source under there and I took all that off and just put the dome on top of the uh, the light and then that actually then puts stuff all over the ceiling <laughs> uh, which looks pretty cool as things are flashing and going off anyway let's start it up here and you can sort of see how these lights happen so you can see they all went off there and uh, <laughs> not going to be able to play one handed but you sort of get the idea in terms of just gives that extra bit of stuff going on right of course these ones are all red we'll show another table with some different colors okay some Indiana Jones you can see like nothing no lights oh there was one straight off the fire some more here so yeah this is a different set of colors what a great table this is too by the way <laughs> look at that just lights up All right, let's start. <laughs> we, this is a classic table. There we go. Different colors going off. A few reds in this one too, but. I think one of those uh, LEDs changes lights, a colour here goes to white, so it has that option too to, to change colours as well. Wow. Ah. Get the castle. rumble pack going <laughs> and all the lights guys seriously it really really comes to life oh <laughs> that was pretty poor all right we well, get the idea anyway um, in terms of the lighting effects and stuff and the rumble pack it just really really uh, adds to the whole experience all right well let's hop out of here and I'll just show you a few other quick things about the software setup side of things we're not going to go into it in a lot of detail obviously in terms of time but at least let me show you sort of some some key aspects of the software okay so the first thing to notice with uh, pinball X as a front-end screen is that um, you can actually get it to uh, fire off some little videos into your DMD so this one here doesn't uh, do a lot some of the ones that don't actually have DMDs uh, like this pinball game I've just got the old press start thing there yeah, we've got last action hero so yeah it does a little animation uh, just as you're flicking through the table so that's pretty so other than the, the launcher being pinball X um, let's hop out of here actually first of all maybe let's if I go into a um, Let's go into one of the Pinball FX games and I'll just show you how that looks. Okay, let's go into Star Wars Rebels. Okay, and you can see it's kicked straight into the game. So it's basically fired up Steam in the background and uh, Again, there's, um, if you go to the Pinball uh, X forums, there's details on how to set all that up um, so that you can um, uh, fire up Steam and, and load the game automatically without having to select anything extra. And of course, how good is this? <laughs> you know, especially with the 1080 in here, uh, beautiful uh, 3D graphics. 
so it's pretty cool to be able to play these sort of fantasy uh, tables and so with the controls I've got it effectively set up uh, through joy to key because these inputs for the buttons are going through a controller that's not a like an iPad the controller for these buttons I think is going through through the plunger as I was saying earlier and I think that one basically acts like a joystick so I had to do a joy to tick to key to map it to the uh, the keys that it's expecting in Pinball FX okay, so I, I can start it with the uh, launch button and use that to fire and I do find that Pitbull FX has a little bit more lag on the flippers so you sort of have to uh, compensate for that once you've been playing Visual Pinball which has slightly less lag still has some lag but <clears throat> But these tables are really, really cool for something, just something different. And to be honest, I always, oh no, I'm actually trying to nudge it. Of course, it doesn't have nudge support either. <laughs> That's the other thing, which is a little bit un unfortunate. But everything else about the game is so, so cool. How it's just, you know, virtual 3D and things flying around. It's cool, eh? It's really cool. Ah! Damn. Anyway, you get the idea. And if I just exit out of here, just using the same exit key, which is really the escape, then we take straight back to uh, Pibble X. So yeah, really nice way to be able to flick between uh, originals <coughs> and uh, the uh, Pinball FX ones. Okay, well, let's hop back out to the desktop. And you can configure this so that uh, you can't get out to the desktop. But you can see their uh, joy to key set up. So if I click on there, you'll see that I've got uh, using that to map my joystick buttons, which is uh, the one on the right here, is the, uh, the right slash, one on the left. It's the shift, the magna save, it's the right arrow. Um, magna save on this side, I think it's probably off the ta off the screen. Let's get this bigger. So, yep, it's the so the left magna magna save is the left arrow, and then we've got the uh, the main plunger, which is enter. We've got start which is up arrow, we've got the extra ball, which is D, and we've got the uh, escape button uh, being B. So just in terms of sights, if you're starting off with Visual Pinball, then the main one to go to is uh, the VP Forums. And um, under VP Forums, there is a section called Getting Started. And there is actually a whole installation guide here and the installer and FAQs and stuff. So you can go through that, guys. There's plenty of actual help on there to, to do that. To get in here in terms of the forums, um, because the forums have got a stack of information and so much, so many really, really friendly, nice people in these forums that will assist you if you uh, if you get stuck. A lot of other sites and software that you may need to be aware of. Um, there is the what's called the DOF config tool. So the DOF is the direct operating framework, 
and this is what actually drives the the lighting uh, around the outside and all the um, the external feedback mechanisms with the gear motors and all the rest of it. So um, Visual Pinball will support uh, supports DOF, the DOF framework, but you have to download the DOF framework uh, separately or at least the configuration files and there's like one, one configuration file for the whole lot. Now I haven't been in here for a while to be honest um, and uh, you need to log in under your own name and uh, you can download the, the latest file. Again, guys, we're not going to go into a full setup here because that's, that would take a long time. Uh, but if you do follow your way through the, uh, the instructions and so forth, hopefully some of this will make more sense when you come up to those stages. All right, so without, without having the DOF, you won't fire off all the feedback stuff. Um, so you definitely need that if you're going to use the feedback. So there you go guys, that was a pretty uh, quick overview I know, I mean there is a quite a lot obviously to go through uh, with Visual Pinball and all the software setup side of things but at least I showed you the main site there in the configuration files, you've seen a little bit about the inside and some of the things to think about in terms of uh, you know planning and building your cab. Anyway guys that is it for this video, I also hope you got something out of it too and uh, for your own little project you might get, be doing. And uh, until next time, uh, look after yourself and all that good stuff. Make sure you subscribe. Give this a thumbs up if you did like the video, of course. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, ciao for now.